Well, let me just start um, sort of as I think the release outlines with a uh, thank you to Jeff Brown, our staff over the years and, and the players over the years. Honestly, really grateful to him for six years ago now being willing to take on the challenge of rebuilding Purdue football and really am grateful for that uh, we've been able to, have to show some evidence that, hey, things can get done here in a, in a big way. And so uh, nothing but appreciation for that. You know, we've won some really big games. We've energized our students, our fan base. Lots of really good things have happened uh, during these last six years. And uh, I, I, I know how much energy, having worked side by side with him for six years, how much energy and effort Jeff personally put into this to make that happen, uh, and, and, and period. And it was a, it was it was a it was a yeoman's yeoman's effort all the way through. And I think all of us here at Purdue should uh, should really be appreciative of that. You know, the fact that uh, he, he's moved on or is moving on uh, to Louisville is a I think we all know this is a unique set of circumstances. I don't think it says a thing about Purdue. In fact, I know it doesn't say a thing about Purdue. Uh, it says everything to do about the sort of unique gravitational pull of his home city, his alma mater, and his family. And that's just uh, something that we could never <laughs> never duplicate. We can't rename the city or move, uh, move anything uh, that, that would uh, allow that to be the case. So on we go. Uh, but again, I really, really appreciate the ball that Jeff has done. We, we are a different program today than when he took over in 2016 in all the right ways. And so that's a really, really, really good thing. Uh, I know the press release mentions uh, that Brian Brom will serve as the interim head coach uh, for, for a Citrus Bowl game. Uh, that I'm sure there are those that are like, boy, that's really unusual. Um, but let me just explain <laughs> what that's all about. First of all, Brian's a really talented coach. Uh, he's our offensive coordinator. And if his name wasn't Brom, it wouldn't be unusual at all. It, obviously, his name is Brom, so it creates some um, bit of a head scratch for folks. but. I can tell you that uh, our players were excited. Our remaining staff members were excited. Uh, Brian was hugely excited at the opportunity for him. It's a great professional moment and a chance to really uh, put his stamp on, on our program and, and, I, and a team over these next several weeks. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, Mark Hagan will call the defense. Mark's our co-defensive coordinator. Uh, I believe Coach English is, will be moving on immediately with Jeff down to Louisville. So Mark will call the defense uh, for us uh, in the ball game and be with us throughout, and we're excited about that also. Obviously, Mark's players respond really well to him, um, and, and it just he provides an air of, of, of stability and confidence on that side of the ball. Brian, obviously, on the offensive side of the ball, so we've got it covered pretty well uh, from all those perspectives. So we're excited about that. We intend to go down there and uh, do everything we can to win, win a football game uh, on January 2nd. That is, that is the goal. On to the other business of the day. Uh, obviously, we are uh, in the process uh, and have begun to execute a search uh, for our next head football coach. That is not uh, something that we uh, were caught flat-footed uh, by, or you know, while we did not want this to happen, nor did we honestly anticipate that it was going to happen, we've been quietly preparing uh, for, for some time in the event it did happen, and so we were ready to, to move into action and we are in motion already in, in all the different ways that that, uh, that, that means. Uh, for those that are maybe going to listen or, or pay attention to what we say here today, or maybe not pay attention, but just take note of what we say, please know that I cannot respond to every suggestion or recommendation that uh, good, bad, or in between <laughs> cannot, will not uh, be able to do that. So. Thank you for the time, but uh, it won't, won't be something that I'm going to spend a lot of energy on. Um, let me just say this, you know, in reference to what I said earlier about where we've come as a program, the opportunity that we present to candidates today is distinctly different than it was in 2016. You know, at that point, it was a hope, a dream, a wish uh, that, that good things could happen in and around Purdue football. Well, now we have evidence that good things can happen around Purdue football, and, and we, we believe, I know I believe completely, uh, that we are positioned and, and poised for nothing but higher level of success in the years ahead. And we just need to like locate the, uh, the, the head coach who shares that vision, fits our place as, as well as our most recent head coach did, and is capable of taking us where we believe we can go. So that's, uh, that is the work that's underway. Uh, again, 
just want to please pay no attention to speculation or media, social media comments or whatever it might be. If it's, if it's not coming from us, it's just that. It's speculation. You know, so people say enough things. Some of it might be right, but I can tell you that uh, you know, we're not putting anything out there to give, uh, nor does it serve any process to give updates or direction or any of that sort of thing. Nothing is accomplished by doing that. So uh, please bear with us on that front. Uh, our, our goal will be to accomplish this as expeditiously as possible. We don't want to rush into it, but I also know we know the calendar. We know when sign, early signing date is. We know uh, what's what's coming and what's ahead of us. So we're going to try to accomplish this and get this to to a good the right conclusion here, just as quickly as we can. Uh, and that is that will be the uh, the everyday goal here until we until we finish that job. And so we, as I said, it's underway now. And uh, with that, I'll take take any questions you might have. Uh, Mike, just does the different state the program is in now as opposed to 2016, does that change the parameters of what you're looking for at all, or um, do you kind of go into it with the same set of criteria as you did in the North Time Jeff? You know, I think the criteria is similar. I think perhaps the, uh, the, the candidate pool may be different this time around. You know, I think we'll, we'll be able to attract uh, the interest of, of folks that maybe are uh, across the board a deeper and, and, and higher quality pool than perhaps we were able to get in 2016. We had really good people in there, and we hired a really good coach. Uh, but I think we may have more of that to be able to select from this time around, and that's that's a result of where, where we've come. Questions, please. What's your message to the current players? Obviously, nowadays they have to make their decisions about whether to go yeah. in the portal or not. So it's a very kind of unique set of circumstances now in college football. Sure. What do you tell them as they have to go through this process? Gotcha. Sp spoke to them yesterday. Uh, Jeff Jeff met with them yesterday afternoon, and I followed on and uh, you know tried to stumble through a few words with, with them as best <laughs> I could. But the, the overriding message was uh, appreciation for what they've accomplished this year, and for those that have been here more than this year over the years that they've been with us. But that that we are just getting started, that the best days and, and the most enjoyable days of Purdue football are still ahead of us and that we, that we want and uh, encourage them to all be part of that, to continue to contribute what they can to our success and that we want them to continue to be part of it moving forward. You know, you, you never know exactly what's going on, but you, I've been in enough rooms, you can read a room. Uh, I, thought the, I thought the response, the body language was good. I, I had several of them. Several of our guys come up to me afterwards and, and say good things. I had several of them come by the office today and say equally good things. So I, I feel like we're, you know, these days, you know, there's lots of voices in their ear. There's lots of things coming at them. But I think in general, our, our guys are, are motivated and, and resolved to really be part of building uh, what we believe Purdue football can ultimately become. So I, I, I feel good about where we are at this point. Kelly, okay. Um, is there any fear, maybe, for lack of a better word, that Brian is going to join Jeff at Louisville, or is he set to come back for next season? Uh, there's, there's no fear um, of, of that. I, I would probably expect that that, that will be a, a, a real option at some point. Uh, they are brothers. They have worked together for a long time. Uh, that would not shock me if that ultimately happened, unless Brian stays on here. You know, when we, when we hire a new head coach, uh, there, there's lots of different ways that can go. Uh, which I would certainly not, as I told Brian yesterday when I, when I visited with him to talk about uh, our desire for him to, to do this, I said, hey, I would be, I would be all for that possibility. If you were, if you were to continue to be our offensive coordinator going forward, that would be a great outcome. Now, if you have other opportunities, obviously you got to do what's best for you at the end of the day and what makes the most sense for you. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. But I'm certainly not. There's no fear of that. It's a, we're all eyes wide open. Obviously, when you did this in 2016, the highest levels of the university were involved in the process and trying to enhance football. Uh, obviously, going through a presidential transition here, what's been the message from uh, the administration in terms of uh, what they want to see from this or how involved they want to be? Sure. So I've spoken to uh, uh, to, to all those folks that uh, that you would be referencing. Uh, they. We've agreed on, on a sort of a, a structure as to how we're going to move forward here. We'll have a, you know an individual sort of representing the leadership group of the university that will that I'll stay in close contact with, keep informed as to what we're doing. 
uh, ask for their guidance counsel and support through, through the process and participation if, if needed. Uh, but it won't be multiple, you know, Mitch and Mung really will not be wrestling to see who's going <laughs> to be involved yeah. in this. Um, you know, Mitch obviously stepping aside um, uh, and, and has indicated, hey, I'll be as involved or not as involved as you'd like me to be. It's really going to be, this is going to happen under Mung's watch going forward. And so we'll make sure that he is fully informed and engaged, but but not participating. It's not, it's not his, uh, not, not yet something that would make a lot of sense from his perspective. There's a lot going on. Yes, a lot going on. <laughs> Mike mentioned Coach English is gone. Obviously, Jeff is gone. Do you know which members of the staff are still around the football team? Um, you know, Sam, I'm going to probably not get it 100% right. Uh, I, my, I believe that folks that have exited uh, and, and joined Jeff initially here, or will be joining Jeff today, tomorrow, uh, are Chris Barclay, uh, Garrick McGee, Ron English, from the coaching staff, that that is what I know right this second. I, I don't know if any more. The rest are, are here, and will be here with us uh, through the bowl game. To my to my knowledge, at this point in time. But that's there's a little bit of fluidity around that, and 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 it just you all you all know this. Um, you know when when these things used to happen at this time of year, you didn't have the pressure of an early signing date of a transfer portal sort of melee. So it's it's you know when Jeff came. He only brought one coach from the staff and left the rest of the guys behind to coach the bowl game at Western Kentucky. Um, these days, unfortunately, that's problematic. It's difficult for that to have happen. So I think we've struck a, you know, a, a reasonable balance. And you know, and Jeff was was aware. Hey, I don't want to, I want to give Purdue's team every chance, but I also need to start on my new job. And so you know, we kind of split the baby here a little bit, trying to uh, to serve serve both ends as best we can. Uh, you mentioned, Mike, that uh, about Brian possibly staying on as offensive mm -hmm. coordinator. Is there any chance that you would look at him or at Mark for the head coaching job? You know, we're, we're going to consider all options that might make sense as we go down the road, but I'm not going to comment on any individual as to who may or may not be, be, uh, be included in our search. We have time for a couple more questions, please. Yeah. <clears throat> have you had any conversations with Mark Hagan so far on his future with Purdue um, after the head coaching search? Uh, I've talked to Mark and expressed, you know, my, my interest in uh, in him wanting, being interested in continuing to be here at Purdue. You know, we, we appreciate what Mark does. His players play hard for him. He's a bulldog of a recruiter. You know, he fits our place in, in lots of good ways. Uh, you know, I, I would I would be all for him being able to be part of our, our program going forward, and I think he shares that sentiment. Gotcha. Um, in terms of Purdue's historical success, um, a lot of it's come from offensive scheme guys, mm -hmm. um, Joe Taylor, Jeff Brown recently. Sure. How much will the historical and traditional success of Purdue be a factor in what you're looking for in an upcoming head coach? You know, at the, and there's no doubt that's that's a true statement, and, uh, and, and we certainly appreciate that that's been part of our, our success, having a little bit of a wrinkle offensively that sets us apart and makes us hard to prepare for. That's, that's not a bad thing. Uh, at the end of the day, if we can land in a similar place, that's great. But, but more importantly, is, is a football coach that, that's going to find a way for us to win, whatever that might take. You know, you've got to be good defensively. You can't just outscore folks. You've got to be able to be balanced. Uh, so whoever we believe at the end of the day is the right Overall, head football coach will be where we go. Uh, you know, do I do I enjoy us having having an edge and having being difficult to prepare for? Darn right, and I and I think that uh, would be something that we'd like to, to to get to the bottom of as we talk to these different candidates how they intend to do that. Um, you mentioned that you spoke to the players. Yeah. Some of them were pretty excited about what's coming up. Um, yeah. Now. The players, some are more vocal than others out there, but how much are you looking to the players and taking into account who they're hoping to see, uh, you know, talked about? I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, we certainly hear their voice and, and they are they are important, you know, hugely important pieces of this. Um, but but honestly, that's that's what I get paid to do. And if I, that's just, just kind of where it is. And I, I hear them loud and clear, appreciate it. Uh, but there's lots of things to weigh, and uh, at the end of the day, I, I've got to make that decision. Mike, if, if you're being realistic, I think you knew this day was coming someday. Yeah. Um, but when did Jeff officially inform you that I'm leaving? 
Uh, what day is today? Today is Thursday. Um, was it? Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday morning. Yeah, yes, yesterday at eleven forty-five ish, uh, thereabouts. He came over and we, we met in person. I, Mike, how many candidates have you reached out to or engaged interest in thus far in the coaching search? Can't say that. Good, good question. Can't help you there. <laughs> okay. Um, great final question to end it on. 